Welcome to High Gluttony. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And welcome to 2021, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's the first day of the new year. We made it through 2020. Wow. Yay. Yay. And in the hopes of kicking things that were off right this year, we have decided to release an episode doing our first world level five dish. Gretchen has made her duck dishes that are world level five on her own, but we have not yet had the opportunity to do one together. This is also, since it's the first day of the new year, we're doing a couple of firsts for this one. We are making separate dishes for the first time. I'm making salmon on croot, And Gretchen is making beef wellington, and we're going to go into a little more detail about that in a second, but this is the first time we're doing world level five, first time we're doing separate dishes, and it's also the first time we have a two-parter. And we really didn't intend to start out (laughs) for it to be a two-parter, but this might be a thing going forward, depending on how complicated things are. We may end up having to do two-part episodes on the rig because we ended up with about six hours worth of recording between two days. This was not just a a one day and done situation. Although our next episode could have been a two-parter, but I think we're, or not, not, not the next step, not the next episode (laughs) because the next episode will be the second half of this. Exactly. For our on Kurt series, that's what we're calling it. The first time we have a series, maybe as Gretchen said, more to come. The first part is coming out today, January 1st, and the second part you can listen to on January 5th. We end up using recipes from BBC Good Food Recipe for the salmon on crew. We use our puff paste puff pastry recipe is from the kitchen. That's K-I-T-C-H-N. And the beef wellington recipe is from delish.com. With some influence from, I believe, Gordon Ramsay. (laughs) Ah, yeah. And you mentioned our dear friend Kenji Lopez again. Right. So you were also, you were jumping around a couple recipes there. But which, let's clarify, we aren't actually friends with him. We just (laughs) like his food so much that we've made a bunch of his recipes. So we think of him as our friend. We talk about Kenji. Yeah. (laughs) First name basis. It's not even his first name. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. You need to focus. <laughs> right. <laughs> so for my salmon on croot, I made, um, oh, let me back up. What makes this a world level five? This is a world level five because we are making our puff pastry from scratch. Ah! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This was so exciting. This was <laughs> super fun. It was fun. But now I'm also convinced homemade puff pastry is better than store-bought and that kind of ruins my life a little bit (laughs) (laughs) you can only make puff pastry now (laughs) and it's not the fastest thing in the world to do I think it took us about three hours if not three full hours Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and extra because another first here and and of 2021 I I really fucked something up so (laughs) it's not the first time that's ever happened I definitely made mistakes before but as far as this podcast goes this was this was one of the bigger failures of baking that I've had it was great though it was a good learning lesson and it helped me along the process when you get into the episode you'll understand a little bit more about what we're talking about um but we did find that there were a few moments where we thought the recipe could have given us a little bit more guidance or expectation setting in terms of the amount of flour to use and a couple of other things. So we just wanted to call that out right now that the dough, it, I found it to be a fairly, fairly simple process. I mean, it's not simple, but the recipe outlines things pretty well in a way that's organized and easy to follow, I thought. But there were a couple of things that for me, if I didn't have Gretchen as a resource in that moment would have really tripped me up. And I think both of us probably felt like there were a couple of moments in the recipe where we could have used a little bit more expectation setting. Or at least we should have maybe consulted their pictures a bit more, but I don't know if there were a lot of pictures on there 
Okay, well, you're looking that up. I'll talk them through. Part one is really us just making the puff pastry. Part two is us following up with making salmon on crout and beef wellington, respectively. We also both make some roasted asparagus on the side. My salmon on crout had a fresh herb cream cheese filling. And Gretchen's wellington, um, she made a sort of classic duck salsa and then used prosciutto. And was that it? Yes, you keep calling it duck cell sauce. <laughs> oh my God, I have to stop. It's just duck cell, people. It's not duck sauce. Cell. Don't listen to me. It's just duck cell. I don't know why I keep doing that. <laughs> Sorry, it's funny. No, thank you for correcting me. We just talked about that. <laughs> I know, I can't stop myself. It, it's not a sauce, it's a paste. Even remember you saying like how much you had to work it down to a paste and I can't keep it in my brain. It's just funny. <laughs> okay. Oh I guess my gosh. There are a few pictures on here, but they don't really show the end of the the process as far as like bringing the dough together. They mm-hmm. go immediately from the fl- like what looks like fluffing to and you know what? I don't think I took a video of me actually doing the first part of the puff pastry dough. I guess I have to make another batch. Bummer. Might have to make some edibles with some puff pastry or something. Ooh, please. <gasps> oh, I could put <laughs> weed in the actual dough. I was going to mention that. Oh, never mind. I don't remember what the point. Well, we were oh. saying you could make you could you, you could make puff pastry with weed butter. Yes, because I figured out that handy little trick of getting the butter to be re-emulsified because you would not be able to use a clarified butter in this dough. Got it. That was the whole point, that sidetrack. <laughs> full circle, full circle. <laughs> That's what we'll call them. We'll call them sidetracks and we will just like put these random episodes together and then we'll release them whenever the fuck we feel like it. And it'll just side like, quests. Yeah, side quests. We have can of quests and side quests. Yeah, exactly. Pantry power-ups, which we've really abandoned for a little while. Yeah, but we'll get back to that. We'll get back. We have a big plan for the new year. There's a fun whiteboard section in this episode. There is a fun whiteboard section because we learn some really cool puff pastry facts. You also explained to us about the difference between a book fold and a letter fold, which was really exciting for me to understand. Yes, that that is actually pretty key to uh, <laughs> the, the whole layering thing. Mm -hmm. to the process yes that's the word I was looking for (laughs) layering thing works too Gretchen you all so you made beef wellington and you oh so I only made salmon Gretchen made beef wellington and went through the cured salmon steps and then how did you end up using that cured salmon I my my dad ended up smoking the salmon on the grill uh, and then he and my mom ate it (laughs) So, right, right, because Gretchen doesn't like seafood. <laughs> I don't like seafood. I don't like it. Yeah, uh, this was funny because, well, I I mean, I guess it's not that funny. I was just thinking, like, you made salmon and didn't eat it. And I was like, I made beef and didn't eat it, but I didn't make beef. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. You didn't. <laughs> I think we want to make clear that, uh, and I'm sorry for repeating ourselves, <laughs> that we're curing the salmon as part of this episode. So we're doing, we're making the puff pastry, we're curing the salmon. I feel like you did say this, all this stuff. I think so, but it's good to be saying it again. I'm um, also curing salmon and I'm making a duck cell, the duck cell that goes as part of my beef wellington, but that won't get used until tomorrow. Getting some prep in the day before. Doing our mise en place. Exactly. So we leave you at the end of this episode um, with our puff pastry resting overnight and the plan in place to pick up with wrapping our proteins and roasting our asparagus and then continuing to learn more about the process of making on crout. Indeed, there will be much on crout. <laughs> <laughs> so much talk about pastry. So that is our part one of on crout series. We actually, for the first time, you'll hear us. Um, we have quite a few sort of transition moments in this episode. And so we're going to record a little bit of 
information about what the next section is going to include. So this is the first time we're doing this. Let us know what you think um, as we go along. And remember to check out our website, highgluttony.com, where Gretchen shares all of the recipes and all of our thoughts about the recipes. We also have our YouTube, our Instagram, and Facebook, and you can find us all at High Gluttony for those places. I had such a good thing to wrap that up with, and then you stopped talking and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have fun with part one. We will let you know how everything Thing goes on January 5th. We'll see you Enjoy then. the episode. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. oh, much better. Yeah. So this episode ends up being about nine little mini sections. And we will talk you through a little bit of each one in advance of that section. Since we record these without really having a thought about doing a transition, this transitions weren't great. So we want to make sure you know <laughs> what you're listening to before, <laughs> before you listen to it. We want each step to be pretty clear for you. So follow along through each of the nine sections with us. And hopefully we do justice to what, what the process is and what we're talking about. So for this per first part, section one, we talk you through the ingredients that we use, which are pretty simple. Then we also begin our puff pastry process up until our first resting point, at which point the dough is supposed to rest for about 30 minutes. And in this step, we're really just making our lean dough only. I think this is gonna end up, once we're done, being about a let world level five. Wow. Opinion. Uh, four, so this is the first time. Five. So it's the first time I'll do a four or five with you. I think mine is definitely a bit more complicated being beef Wellington, where it's like you're having to, you know, your your assembly as far as like putting your salmon on, putting your cream cheese filling in the middle, and then putting another piece of salmon on. A little bit easier than my whole rolling situation that I'm gonna have to do tomorrow. So. <laughs> totally, because uh, we're so we're this is a big episode. This is our New Year's episode, New Year's Day episode, and okay. for the first time, we wanted to make something different. And again, because I'm a vegetarian and Gretchen is not, I'm making salmon on croup, and Gretchen is making beef Wellington. And we're gonna do asparagus on the side of this. But we're breaking this up into two parts. I'm not sure if we'll release it as two, but we're recording in two days. And today, our first day, we're making puff pastry from scratch. Oh my God, I'm excited and a little nervous. I'm a little nervous, but I'm just trying to be excited for the most part. So I mean, you, you, did, you, you did do your homework, which I, yep. you know, I actually, um, so you, did you watch the, um, now if it's on Netflix, it's called the, Great British Baking Show beginnings that season because mm -hmm. I kept mm -hmm. like looking through all of the things because at a certain point I was like who's in this episode so that I could be like okay it's this episode <laughs> and then I was like none of these people are in any of the episodes but, <laughs> so it's the beginning but I did do my homework by watching the British Bake Off I guess Bake Off in America Great British uh, no, no no Baking Show in America it's Baking Show Great in British America Bake Off Baking show, baking show. Um, anyway, yeah, it was fun. I did my research. Although I did not actually have time to watch the one where they made Wellington. I think I've seen it, but I didn't have time to rewatch that one. But I did watch all the other ones where they made puff pastry. So let's go over our ingredients. We're starting with mm -hmm. two cups of all-purpose flour. So there are different recipes out there. But for what we're doing, we are doing all-purpose. Then we want a teaspoon of salt. Oops, no. Teaspoon. Well, it was, it was two cups of all-purpose flour plus one tablespoon, whatever. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think that's the tablespoon for like putting on the thing when you're rolling it out. But I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to use more than that. I am using my roll pat because with puff pastry, you don't want to add a ton of flour while you're rolling it. So like that's one of the times when having a silicone covering for your counter might be advantageous. And you might even be able to get away with doing it, like rolling it on a towel if you 
or trying mm. to use as little flour as possible, but I'd be worried about getting fibers into your, your dough. Fat. Sure. So I was just going to do it on the, my countertop. Yeah, I think that's fine. Especially this, this initial stage, unless you have an annoying counter, like I had when I moved into my house, they used to have, it was a tile countertop, which I was like, who designed this kitchen? This is garbage. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. No one wants to clean a tile countertop. No. I was like, this is very poorly mm-hmm. planned. <laughs> So yeah, so we have two cups all-purpose flour plus one tablespoon for whatever, one teaspoon of salt (laughs) and two thirds of a cup of ice water is what we're going to start. So I'm going to get my ice water out of the fridge. With pastry, keeping things really cold is pretty important. And then our uh, only other ingredient is eight ounces of unsalted butter cold, which comes after we make what they call our lean dough, which is really in the baking world, when they refer to lean, it just means it doesn't have fat in it or lower fat, or in this case, it's got zero fat in it. It's just water and flour and a little bit of salt for flavoring. And then they said, so the the technique is to dump your flour on the counter. First you pour your salt in to the flour, right? Yeah. Mix your, mix your salt in your flour, run your fingers down the center. This is very vague though. I'm like, how deep of a trough? Do you want a deep trough, a little trough? Like you're only putting a tablespoon of water in there. How does that affect? Anyway, I'm over, I'm probably overthinking it at this point. All right, here I go. All right. Okay. So sprinkle one tablespoon of water into the trough. Fluff the dough with your fingers, keeping your fingers loose and using a scooping motion. I have a question about the water because it feels like to me, well, okay, I, a couple of questions, I guess. My understanding is that with baking, you need to be pretty precise with your measurements. And what's curious to me about putting ice in water is that inevitably doesn't some of that ice melt into the w- liquid and then you have more water than you are supposed to have? Uh, not not if you're getting to your two thirds of a cup with your ice already in there, which is how I did mine was put the ice. Oh, in first. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oh, your question makes me think you, you measured out your two thirds of a yep. cup and then put ice in. Um, yep. 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 So yes, that, that makes yes. more sense. Technically. Yes. <laughs> you kind of did it wrong, but Stop. since we're kind of going by feel as far as like we're adding two thirds is sort of a rough estimate for what you're going to need here because you're going by feel. Okay. And is that the case a lot with bread in particular? Because yeah, the uh, bread and especially you're kind of going by when, when it just comes together and it also depends on the type of bread. There there are a lot of the type of flour type yeah. of flour because I confused you today by putting that extra uh, uh, those additional uh puff pastry recipes out there yeah yeah uh, you added the Paul Hollywood one which was like part bread flour and I was like shit I think I have some but like oh no <laughs> yeah I I just since I was trying to find that episode last night and I was writing like great British bake-off puff pastry and <laughs> Yeah, that came up. So I was like, oh, here, well, what what does this look like? And so because I knew Mm -hmm. he'd have a slightly different methodology. Right. So my dough right now, I'm sort of getting close to where. Okay. um, I've gone through a little over a third of a cup. And so I'm starting to get, I can kind of get it to uh push together but still quite flour. Like it has a lot of loose flour with it. It's definitely not ready not there yet so okay i'm gonna keep going i can push it together but still pretty flaky and are you kind of leaving the bigger clumps as they form or are you trying to separate those a little i'm not i'm not really separating those because we do want this to pretty much come together in a sheet at some point but but we have quite a few rest periods right Right. So part of this is also that your flour needs to absorb the water and it's not going to absorb it all right away. So that's part of it. You okay. also want to rest it so that you're not, you know, because if we went straight through, we probably end up developing the gluten a bit more than we want to. I think maybe, maybe I might need one, maybe two more additions of water. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm pretty close. And then it says to cover it in plastic wrap and put a, putting put it in the fridge, I believe. Yeah, it says chill the dough. Press the dough into a square and wrap in plastic. It's fine if it looks a little shaggy and unkempt at this stage. 
and then refrigerate for at least 30 minutes. Square. Yeah, they're they're trying to get you so that you have the right shape when you're starting your full, you're putting your your butter in. Got it. Because this, the more square you get it, the, the easier it is to get the, the butter trapped inside, basically. <laughs> doing a uh, shitty, uh-huh. shitty square over yeah it. mine's like a pumpkin <laughs> yeah it's not great but we'll have more time to butts with the shape after it's sat for a little bit so and wrap I'm, it in plastic and i'm gonna be a little lazy and just put mine in tupperware and put it in the fridge so okay that's acceptable if we're trying to lo- reduce our carbon footprint here and not use as much yeah. plastic that's that's a True. fine way to go. It just needs to be covered and so you're not losing any moisture while it's resting. Now in section two, we talk you through rolling out your butter and by roll it out, I mean, eat the shit out of it, because that <laughs> is a highly effective way to get it to do what you, what you want. Only recommended for butter. Nothing else. <laughs> do not beat the shit out of anything else. Just butter. <laughs> and turning that into a little beautiful square and then to fold your into your pastry and put that in the refrigerator to rest for 20 minutes. So we've got our butter into large pieces and sprinkled with a teaspoon of flour. And I think, I think you're just going to beat the shit out of it, aren't you? (laughs) Yeah. Do you want to read the next part? (laughs) All right. It says, begin pounding the butter with a French rolling pin. Any rolling pin will work. Becca is using what I would consider most people's idea of a rolling pin is where you are, you, you have a handle and then a wood block basically around the handle that rotates independently of the handles. Now, So I think this is why they're being specific. I guess this is a a French rolling pin. It's basically just a dowel. (laughs) (laughs) We'll take Uh, pictures. Yeah, we'll take pictures. So because it's all one piece, you're not going to run the risk of having like your, God damn it, I'm trying to explain physics while high and it's really hard. (laughs) So because you're going to get a spin on the, the, that rolling pin, even if you're gentle with, you're not going to have as much force Mm -hmm. to spread the butter out. So it doesn't work quite as well as a a rolling pin like this. Got it. And now that I've gone down a total rabbit hole and with a mid sentence, (laughs) begin pounding the butter with a French rolling pin to soften it and sprinkling flour on your rolling pin as needed. So really they don't give a fuck. They're like, you can add butter to the, or flour to this. It says as needed. How will I know what that means with the butter? Uh, it'll start sticking to so the rolling start, pin. Yeah. So if okay. you see butter on your rolling pin, put more flour, more flour. on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I said it. Okay. So we yeah. just start pounding it. Pound it. Or or you hit it and then it rolls for ages. Is that what's happening over there? No. It just sounded like you like hit it once and then you it started rolling and so I was like oh. No, I'm kind of, I'm hold. I have a thumb on the rolling part. Oh, on the part. roller part? Yes, I'm tr- trying to uh, stabilize it like that. Okay, so I mine just stuck to my rolling pin. Oh, this I'm is supposed pretty to therapeutic. Sh- well, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I don't know. I find cooking very therapeutic. Yeah. Are you rolling? What are you doing now? I folded it because it started, like, pieces of it started coming apart. So I'm trying to just kind of get it into one solid piece instead of... Ah. Um, okay, so I should still be pounding. Yes, keep pounding. Okay. But also, be mindful that you're trying to get a square. So, okay, um, so don't don't keep making this rectangle that I am. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you are kind of aiming for a rectangle. For another time when your bench scraper comes in really handy. I have uh, a little lodge skillet scraper thing, scraper. <laughs> and it's per- it's it's working. It's working. Than- yeah, it's working. Pound the butter flat, then use a butter scraper to gather it up again. Sprinkle with another teaspoon of flour, pound flat, and repeat. Pounding and gathering, pounding and gathering until the butter is very pliable. So I think this is where your your tablespoon comes from, because I think you're just supposed to add three tablespoons or teaspoons, which flour is flour total. A flour total. Okay. Ay. They're but you can They're... sprinkle it as needed on your roller. On your roller, yeah. But to the actual okay. thing, it's 
you don't want to add more than three teaspoons. Yeah. So mine's getting pretty pliable. I did buy frozen puff pastry just in case I can't get it right. (laughs) So I was trying to figure out because I was like, wait, if we just use the stuff we make, we won't be able to tell if our puff pastry has worked. So here's what I'm going to propose because we want to make sure that we check our puff pastry since we're making it by hand, but also try and have the backup of having (laughs) the pastry available is to, to roll it out, like to basically then cut off like a small corner and bake it in the oven, because I I'm hoping we'll have enough dough to be able to test a small amount. Cause I was like, we don't want to wrap our stuff in it and then find out our dough is wrong. It's like, that would defeat the whole purpose. (laughs) And then I was like, wait, why would, how would we know if we need to use our backup dough if we've already wrapped our food in that dough? <laughs> right. We'll be like afterwards, oh, this didn't turn out well. <laughs> now we can't eat any of this. <laughs> right. So I was like, huh, hey, uh, yeah, how are we going to break that up? Or we could do a test bake. Probably the better way to go would to be do a test bake when we start tomorrow. Okay. Because then we'll, we could do it together and we'll be using, basically using the dough from the same starting point instead of like only resting right. it a small amount tonight, testing it. Right. Because we wouldn't really know if part of the problem, if we cooked it tonight, is that it didn't sit long enough. Right. Yeah. We want to reduce okay. the number of variables if we're approaching this from a, a scientific point of view. Right. So we pick up in section three here. We've got our dough, our lean dough, and our rolled out, beaten the shit out of butter resting in the fridge. So while that's happening, we start curing our salmon. And then the salmon also rests overnight so that we can release a lot of that moisture that's in there. At this point, we also come across confusion about how to say the word demerara sugar. And did we confirm how to say it, Gretchen? Yes, it's it's demerara. You're supposed to use demerara sugar. I didn't end up using that, but we do talk about it. And we kind of promised in the intro we'd figure out how to say it. So I'm glad you figured out how to say it at this point. I did, yes. <laughs> So I'm going to recommend, so we're, for, for Becca's salmon en croute, we're using a BBC called, yeah, BBC good food recipe for a salmon en croute. And it does have the metric measurements. So you <laughs> have to remember you need to convert things, which I uh, decided to do for Becca so that she did not mm-hmm. have to. Gretchen's an overachiever <laughs> in some aspects of her life, <laughs> but not, uh, but totally lame in other parts. I'll read the, what it says, and then you okay. can read the conversion. So it's 50 grams of flaky sea salt, 25 grams of demerara sugar. (laughs) Demerara? Demerara. Demerara. Yeah. Okay. Demerara sugar. And then two 500 grams of skinless, boneless salmon. Oh, so if you have skin on yours, you're going to have to take the skin off. Mine are skinless. Okay. So it's two 500. Skin it grams of boneless skinless salmon that we're going to cure which is about a pound each so you want two pounds of salmon for this recipe kind of nice if you're buying it at the store though because if you can buy two separate pieces that are about the same size it's going to be easier to cure let me go grab mine oh shit i might just cure these right on these plastic trays that they came in from (laughs) there you go like this is a kind of nice tray yeah this will work. This is some farm-raised fresh Atlantic salmon. My my beef, I went a little more out because uh-huh. I was at the farmer's market this morning and the Sonoma Mountain Beef Company was there. Ooh. And so, and they had whole tenderloins. Oh my God. So you did it. <laughs> I did it. I bought a whole tenderloin. Uh, I'm not going to use the whole tenderloin today. I'm going to cut it because she was like, you should probably, you might want to 
cut that up and freeze it. Yeah. I am going to rinse my filet off because they've had it shrink wrapped. And I probably should have been a, a good little chef and put it on ice last night, but I did not do that. Oh, why would, why do you do that? Keeps it colder. It's just better for the fish as far as storage goes. But since I wasn't storing it long term, I was like, meh. Oh my God. Okay. I got one skin off. Sounds like you might need a shark filleting knife, Becca. Do you have a I nice know. thin knife or no? No, not really. Uh, the flesh is a little bit loose, which is not ideal, but. I mean, we are going to put salt all over this. <laughs> the salt is going to do what? Draw the moisture out of the meat. So part of this is because what we want, we don't want our filling to be too wet in our on crew tomorrow. Yours, we're, we're pulling, pulling moisture out of the salmon, which will help with the final cooking. I'm really high. We are talking about curing salmon. So we read out our metric measurements, but I don't think I actually read out the, the what do we call that? U.S. measurements. So basically, you, you're getting two ounces of salt, one ounce of uh, the demerara sugar. Now that is specified because it's got a little bit larger grain, so it won't dissolve as quickly as, as part of the, the reasoning for that. So that's why they're, they were specific about that. Also in England, they're fancy. They have more types of sugar than we, although we do kind of have that here now because that's basically, it's basically sugar in the raw. It's just that larger, larger crystal. Crystal. Yeah. yeah. Two ounces of salt, one ounce of sugar. Yes. Two ounces of salt, one ounce of sugar, and approximately a kilogram of fish, which translates to two point, I think it's 2.2 pounds. 2.2 pounds, if you're being exact, is the translation. Okay. Here's what we're looking at for method. The day before you want to ensemble, ensemble the encroute, mix the salt and sugar in a bowl. Scatter half the mix over the tray. Then lay one of the salmon fillets on top, skin side down. It says skin. Mm -hmm. I don't think that came through very clearly. Not skin, because remember we're dealing with skinless. And Becca just had to remove hers. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> Sorry, the skin from your salmon, not your skin. <laughs> Although that does make me think Ooh. of, did you, did you ever watch uh, Grace and Frankie? I Yes, but I haven't watched like the last two seasons, I don't think so. I haven't either, but there's one part where Frankie said, Frankie's like sleeping in Grace's bed for some reason. And I guess like throughout the night, she says like, let's get you out of that skin. And so I say that. <laughs> I say that to James often. So like, yes, that's weird. And also I was like, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> that's totally normal. Uh, well, we're specifying the salmon skin, yeah. not Becca. The salmon. <laughs> the salmon is not supposed to have skin. Humans are. <laughs> Humans are. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so you do one half of the mix on the actual tray itself. So whatever you're putting it on, you're putting down a bed of salt. I'd probably try and keep it to where you're going to put the salmon down for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't realize I was being so funny today or whatever well, you <laughs> smoke today is making you extra giggly. That's true. It could be all these things. <laughs> it could be, yeah. I'm extra witty and you're extra high. Who knows? <laughs> keep it coming. Keep it coming. So that, all right. So you got your first piece of salmon, the skin side towards the tray, and then you have the not skin side, uh, the internal side, I guess. Mm -hmm. You're going to put part of your, I'm going to say about a quarter of your mix on that, and then put your other salmon fillet inside on top so that your other skin side is facing you once you've put your other piece of salmon on top. Okay. So, so it's like, like if it were shoes, you'd take the left shoe put it on the ground regularly with the sole on the ground. You take the right shoe, flip it over, connect the two tops, and the, the right sole is, at, is facing you. Yes. I love this analogy. Yes. Thank you. Exactly. Okay. It's like packing shoes in a shoe box. Yeah. There you go. We need to remember to take pictures can I put this of our... on a, a plate? Yes. You can put it on a plate, but do it with something with a rim because there's going to be moisture that comes out. So like you want to make sure that it doesn't just drip all over your fridge. What if I, what if I don't have the flaky sea salt? Oh shit. Flaky sea salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, so you just want to use sea salt, I think, because remember mm-hmm. when we did the pickles, we were talking about why the one recipe asked for sea salt and rock salt. Um, because kosher right. salt is more salty. So I was just using kosher salt. It's, <laughs> it goes back to the, it's basically exactly like the sugar. Salt doesn't melt quite as fast, but you want something with a little bit larger texture. So okay. so if you only have kosher salt, do you have any like anything in a rock, in a rock salt to mix into that? Um, well, I, I don't only have, I have sea salt. I just don't have oh, okay. flaky sea salt. Okay, then you're fine. Uh, Wait a minute. So many salt. Do you have Maldon salt? Uh, no, I'm out. Uh, Wait, hold on. <laughs> Maybe I hold on back up. Uh, it says ancient kosher sea salt, and I only saw the sea salt part. That's fine. So it's fine. It's kosher though. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not totally down on the like kosher sea salt kosher salt divide here. Uh, <laughs> right. I don't either. So I think it's fine. I think it's also fine. Uh, all right. Demerara. I'm going to be really embarrassed if I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out for the intro. Maybe. 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 We sometimes but, forget the things we're supposed to do for the intro. Yeah, fucking potheads forgetting to do stuff. <laughs> How dare we? All right. How dare we? No promises. Zero promises here, people. Zero. <laughs> so I've got my mixture here. Which okay. I'm not going to stir by hand just, yeah. just yet because that sugar is going to be hot. Okay. So half the mixture goes down on the bottom. First step, half the mixture goes down on the bottom. Okay. Just kind of patting it with my hands a little to get it into the shape. Oh, uh, that's fine. I don't know if I put half down though. I still didn't get half of the stuff on there. So I guess it's okay. Uh- <laughs> Yeah, nowhere near enough under there. I'm going to just put a little bit more and a little bit more. And yeah, you just really want like a generous amount over the interior here. Yeah, and I think I might even need to go with a little bit more underneath. I've got a pretty good yeah. coating here. I wonder, I'm wondering at the benefits of potentially like getting like a, the more of the tail end piece of the salmon. Uh-huh. I have a very, very much a center piece, a uh, center mm-hmm. cut. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's um, thick, you mean? Yeah, so it's a lot thicker. Sure. Ooh, I just had a really good idea that mm. I should have thought of before. Although I did think of that this for your filling, for your, your Wellington, was putting the, like, chopping up some preserved lemon and putting it in there. <sighs> Ooh, that's a great idea. So would it replace something or just be an no ad. ad an ad just add yeah yeah like because you could put a little bit of fresh in and a little bit of the preserved and then you'll get like two different levels of like two different types of basically lemon in there I'm I'm even covering the sides of mine my yeah there's a here. lot of mixture there's a lot of stuff <laughs> here for what I've got yeah I've 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 used all mine now so that's that's it my salmon is cured. Okay. But then you're supposed to weight it down. It says, I think it says like with a tin, which I think is so funny. <laughs> Place another tray on top. Well, this then, is the BBC, oh, okay. right? This yeah. is the BBC. So yeah, we have to deal with the, what do they call those? Britishisms. Or that's what I'm going to call them now. I don't even care if that's the thing. That's what they are now. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using the other salmon tray as the top. Now I may come at, have a problem with this later because <laughs> these are plastic. And the benefit of using like a, a metal tray would mm-hmm. be that it's going to probably provide a more even pressure over the, over the top of it. I see. What to weigh mine down with? A book? That's kind of stinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might absorb some smell. <laughs> I guess it doesn't need to be particularly heavy. Maybe a frying pan? It might be a, I mean, I don't know if it could be too heavy because what you're trying to do is use pressure to drive more moisture out. So yeah, ah, uh-huh. making my life harder. I don't know why I'm doing this here. I'm just going to put this plate on top of it. And... So I was like, I'm just going to do another plate. <laughs> and then I might use this little uh, part of this mortar and pestle that I got and hold it down like that. Oh, fish. Why you got to have such a strong smell? Is that one of the things you don't like about it? I guess. <laughs> I mean, I definitely do not enjoy how it smells. So yeah. 
I'm just like, I guess I wouldn't put it that way, but maybe. God. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I don't know what to weigh this down with. And frying pan sounds like a good idea to me. Can of, yeah. can of beans? Oh, uh-huh. There you go. Problem solved. Mm-hmm. Okay. Moving on to section four. This is where things get exciting. We're going to wrap our butter block in our dough, roll that out, and make two turns of the dough, which is the folding process. And we will talk about the type of fold that we are doing in this section. It's about this time I'm noticing that my initial processing of the pith pastry was not up to snuff. And I may need to make another batch of dough, but I, I've decided to push through to see how it goes and that maybe maybe on the next turn it'll be okay. That'll take you up to putting it into the fridge for a second time. Yeah, for that second rest. Should I get my butter out and see that it, and maybe pound it just a second? A, a little before? bit, yeah. Yeah, since we both just went a bit over. And this time I'm going to keep some plastic wrap under the stuff I'm working on. Mine's still pretty pliable, so I'm going to pop mine in the fridge and just leave it in there while I roll this out real quick. Your butter? Yeah. I'm okay. worried it's going to start melting, even though it's not particularly warm here today. So did you get your dough out? Yes, I have it out right now. Okay. Mmm, that tastes like hardtack. That's basically what it is. And and you say what is hardtack? Because who knows mm-hmm. what hardtack is? Tell me more. Do you do you actually know what it is? No, I have no idea. <laughs> I, you were agreeing <laughs> with me, like you were like, yeah, totally. Uh-huh. I'm like, no. wow, you know what hardtack is? That's super uh, weird. Was your no, brother no. also into the Civil War? <laughs> the brother that you don't have? Right. Wait, sorry. So we're rolling this into a a seven inch square. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's very specific. Seven inches, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Some of mine seems like parts of it are a little bit wetter than other parts. That's all right. Okay. I might have not gotten mine wet enough. Oh, I had uh, to tape measure out for seven inches and it just knocked it all over. Well, aren't you smart? <laughs> what if it's not totally a square? It's all right. I mean, it should okay. be as square as possible. So it kind of goes by what your butter shape looks like. Oh, and you kind of need corners, right? So because yeah. you put the butter in the middle and then kind of wrap this around it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, where where this recipe says wrap in plastic, you can just wrap your butter and like put it between two pieces of parchment paper too, because basically you're just keeping the air from it. Got it. I mean, it's still a little pumpkiny. I'm cutting the sides off to try and make it more square. <laughs> okay. <in the> center. <laughs> I think this might be a seven inch square that I've got going on here. Seven inches is not very big. No, it's it's smaller than I think I thought. Mine might need to go out a little bit further. Mine's kind of like eight by nine. It's probably fine. Okay. <laughs> Bigger than my butter, I think. As I say, how big of a thing with a four by four block? <laughs> Oops. I'm not getting anything right here. <laughs> it's not four by four. Mine's a pancake. Well, fuck. But it is smaller than the thing. <laughs> I mean, that's the major part of it. I might not have enough water in my dough. Oh, hardtack. Anyway, so hardtack. Oh, right, hardtack. Was something they made at, at least during the Civil War. It's basically like a really thick cracker. So it's like really dried out, very simple bread, which is, it's literally like flour, water, and salt. And that's it. Hmm. And they'd make it, and then you'd like use it in, like, I think they, commonly like dipped it in coffee you know it was like to be like dipped uh, with things so that you know not standalone necessarily right yeah you're not necessarily just gnawing on hardtack although I'm sure people, people did. did yeah mine's a little bit more four by four and I don't want to roll too much though because I want to keep that cold okay so place square of butter on top of the dough at a 90 degree angle to the dough so oh where it goes kind of kitty corner mine's not gonna totally work like that <laughs> yeah mine's not 
either because my square isn't big enough. <laughs> my square's big enough if it if I put it in in the same direction. I think my butter is too big. I'm gonna roll mine a little thinner because it's not it won't go around my butter block. Okay. Okay. Me too. Because it's supposed to in, totally cover it, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I think I understand why they want you to do it this way. So they meet in the middle. I think I need to go bigger still. I think you're supposed to push on it a little bit to get it to go. Okay. Okay. Because it says pinch to seal. So you really do want to kind of like, you could work the dough out a little bit with your fingers to get it to seal around it. I see. Okay. And you're just making a little like envelope. Yeah. Envelope around it, a little pocket. My dough might be a smidge dry. I'm almost um, there. What's right. nice is about having the plastic wrap underneath is like I can kind of use it to to move it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kinda. It sticks. It's sticking to the plastic a little. So. Oh no! No no no! Go around. Go around. Got a hole. Got a hole. Oh no. Okay. I think it's okay. I have one part that's like a little bit bigger than the other part. That's okay. All right. Wrap it back up. It does. Mine does not look good right now. Oh, so we just form it and then wrap it. Wait. No. Oh. Okay, pinch to seal. So now, yeah. So we got to do two two of our six turns. Got it. And so you're going to oh, go for okay. an elongated triangle or rectangle, sorry. Not triangle. I think my dough was too dry. I got a lot of holes coming through here. Uh-oh. Did you flower your work surface? I guess not. you probably don't want to if it's dry. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to because I've got the flower peeking through here. Uh-huh. Yeah, because your your fuck, your butter is supposed to be completely enveloped in your dough. Okay. And I did not get there. I see. Gonna be a problem. And then it says it roll it into it twelve inches long by six inches wide. Okay. Shit. 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 What Shit. do we do about yours? Ooh, I don't know. <sighs> I might just go with it and learn from experience. <laughs> Uh, either that and I'm going to make another batch. Right, you can't be satisfied with it. I probably won't be. So mine's a little bit like 11 and a half by 8. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, fold. fold. So then it says, after you roll it out into t- roughly 12 by 6, fold the top third over the bottom third, uh, and uh, the bottom over the t- top third, like a letter. Okay, so this is having us do a single. So then we do a second turn. Yeah, so you do a rotate second turn it. and rotate it. And then roll it out again. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> now my dough was way too dry. Shit. I, yeah, I'm going to have to do another batch. Oh, really? Yeah. It's too dry? Yeah, it's absolutely fucked. Oh, no. All right. Don't you love how I'm the one who's done this before? But I, well, and I haven't done this exactly. I, yeah. I think I must have done more forgiving doughs than this. All right, I'm I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Okay. And then I'm gonna start a new batch. Okay. So you did your second turn though on that one. Yeah, but I can't I can't even really roll it out because the butter is just coming through everywhere. Ugh, bummer. I okay. fucked it up. I don't like their description then because like you want a little more guidance. Well, I feel like that. Saying that it should be a little bit dry is going to let lend people to where this is going to happen. Yeah, because you really totally. shouldn't be seeing any butter coming out. So I'm just I'm annoyed because I see I know better. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is, is because we got our salmon cured in the first go around here, I actually have extra time. So we're at section five and this one, Gretchen, is prepping her duxelle ingredients, which is mostly just kind of getting her mushrooms together. Zhuzhing them up in the uh, <laughs> food processor. Oh, we forgot to mention the food processor in the intro. Let's say we, it now. A food processor is not essential for this. I, we do talk about it some, but it's sort of an offhand comment about how I don't want to chop up a bunch of mushrooms into teeny tiny pieces. Having a food processor makes the, the process a lot faster. <laughs> A lot easier. Totally. It totally. can be done by hand. It, I think you even say you can put the mushroom, the shallots, and the thyme all in the food processor. This is true because I did not do that. 
Because <laughs> I did not know I was supposed to. I mean, you're chopping things. Why not make your life easier by chopping them all together? For duck sal, works particularly well. But again, not totally necessary, but does make your life easier. I'm going to get my food processor out so I can make my duck cell. Okay, tell me about the duck cell. Duck cell. It's basically just really finely chopped mushrooms, a little bit of shallot, a little bit of thyme, and then you cook it down till it's a paste. It's a, a flavorful paste I'm going to put on my meat tomorrow. So you put that on the meat inside the... First thing I'm going to do is sear the meat. Okay. Then I'm going to lay out a bunch of prosciutto. Okay. And then I'm going to spread the duck cell on the prosciutto. And then you roll the tenderloin up in this mushroom ham envelope sort of thing. <laughs> I can't think okay. of a good word for it right now. Cinnamon and roll? They- <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Roulade. Okay. Fancy. Uh, I did have the option of going fancy because I found Serious Eats Beef Wellington recipe, but I decided it was too fancy and I didn't want to fuck with that. Most Beef Wellington recipes have this duck cell, which is chop up my mushrooms in the food processor. What oh, mushrooms are okay. you using? So I'm using a combination of shiitake and cremini's. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I just yeah. going ahead and chopping this up in the, the food processor because when I'm not chopping mushrooms this fine by hand. Fuck that. Um, nah. Nah. So how many are there? Pound and a half. So it's a it's a good amount. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> I think as fancy as I want to go with this is maybe perhaps adding some truffle into the mushroom mix. That's pretty fun. Uh well, you know, I bought a truffle for Thanksgiving, so I have some fresh truffle that Oh, that's right. You got a black truffle? Yeah, I have some to use. So I put in like seven or eight mushrooms and then ground it up and it came out just perfect. So. Okay, so just batches. Yeah, that, it's batch, batch thing. One shallot, okay. Yeah, chop up my shallot here. What's our time? Seven minutes on the okay. next turn. Oh, this even this recipe even says to do pulse the mushrooms in a, oh, oh. I could have pulsed the mushroom shallots and the thyme I'm supposed to put in there in it. Bummer. Bummer. You're right, Kenzie. It is time for section six. (laughs) And guess what? It's whiteboard time. Whiteboard time. And this is where we really get into the types of folds and we learn cool things about puff pastry. Kenzie is very (laughs) excited for this section. She loves whiteboard time. Loves it. Your number one pupil. Indeed. Oh, we'll have to post a picture of me reading Unicorns or Jerks to her. Uh, it oh, came please. up on my, on my Facebook memories. So. <laughs> oh my God, you have to. Dough. <laughs> Puff pastry dough. Oh, white, whiteboard, whiteboard. Oh, whiteboard. Okay. Not, not Whiteboard. Dough. Whiteboard time. Whiteboard time. So one scratch and talks us through some cool facts about the layers of the puff pastry and explain the different, the two different types of folds you can do. We start to work on the next round of turns. And at this point, I kind of start noticing that the butter is really coming through on mine and had to kind of consistently add more flour to keep it from peeking through. So I think I ended up using a decent amount of flour in this section. I think we both ended up using a lot more flour than we were anticipating. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. You weren't the only one. And then we definitely find out that my dough is not good. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And has to be redone. So I, this is the stage where I'm making a dough from the beginning for the second time in one day. (laughs) I'm insane. (laughs) But she does it for the podcast people i do it for you guys i do it for all of you you would have done that read you would have redone that dough on your own anyways though yeah yes i would have (laughs) 
although be be fair, I before we did this, I don't know that I would have done a beef Wellington completely from scratch with the dough and everything. That's fair. You're That's welcome. Totally fair. <laughs> Oh, but wait till you guys see the pictures. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So many good pictures. So many good pictures. It's whiteboard time. It's whiteboard time, everybody. All right. Here are our facts. So we've kind of already covered that we're doing six turns, which basically just means we're folding it six times. So this is something I read in on food and cooking last night. Once you've done your six turns, there are 729 layers of lean dough interspersed with 728 layers of butter. (laughs) Yeah. I was was like, that's, that math is mind boggling. Totally. Uh, But I think this also depends on your fold. So we'll have to talk about the folds in a second. So each, each of these layers though, are so microscopically thin. They're basically the width of a single starch granule. So they're like super, super tiny, like way thinner than paper. Wow. And then how it works to get that puffing when the air starts to expand and then the water in the butter and, and from the lean dough starts turning into vapor and it pushes the layers apart. So that's how you get the flake. The air and the moisture leaving the butter? Is that what you said? Right. So it's, as the water okay. converts from liquid liquid water mm-hmm. into vapor mm-hmm. you know vapor always when you heat things they expand and so vapor mm-hmm. expands and so it just kind of pushes all those little microscopic layers of dough apart just a little bit a little bit a little bit a little bit so so cool talk about a fold um, question real quick what's the difference between this and making a croissant uh, so croissants generally it's very similar. So that's why I said there's a few things that are like this because these are all laminated dough. Lamination is just that folding around the butter. So it's very, very similar. But but usually croissant has a yeasted lean dough versus this where you're just getting your expansion from that air vapor lift. Whereas in in that sort of thing, you're going to get, you're also going to get lift from the yeast eating the starch and converting that into gas. Um, and you do develop okay. the gluten a bit more for that type of thing. So it's a little bit, okay. it's different, but it's very similar. So these are our two different types of folds that they generally recommend for puff pastry. I love and the illustrations. Thank you. <laughs> Collaboration, me and mom, mom wrote the words. Mm-hmm. I drew the things. So beautiful. <laughs> My handwriting is terrible. So I think you're not always getting that 700 number. I think you're more likely to get that with the book fold because you're incorporating a little, a a few more layers into your dough. So the recipe we're using is having you use a single or a letter fold, which is just three pieces going together. So you're not going to end up with quite as many layers. And this is probably good for something like a Wellington where you don't need as much lift versus something like um, a mil fui uh, dessert where you want a little bit more lift on it, you would probably do the book fold, which is actually four layers. So like the book fold is folding it a quarter, one quarter of the dough each in towards the center and then folding that in half like a book, Mm -hmm. which I did first was the singular letter where you take a third and fold it over one third of the dough, and then you take the bottom third and fold it over that, and there you go. Mm -hmm. Now we're really getting into the rest period for our, well, the beginning of my dough, my second dough, and Becca is chugging like right along with hers. And so while the, those are resting, I start making my uh, duck cell. Not a sauce. Not a sauce. Duck cell is just mushroom, shallot, and thyme, in case we haven't covered that thoroughly enough so far. <laughs> and do you want to know the cool fact I learned today about this? Is Please? that duck cell, because I was like, what, is, what does this word mean? So it was named for the French Marquis Duxel with a small d 
and a little what the fuck they call it thing and they capital u x e l l e s so it was named after a person it's not a food word that came from some other thing that describes the food so it doesn't mean like fresh herb paste no (laughs) it's named after somebody it's named after somebody (laughs) although this is let, let me put the caveat, this is Epicurious, and there are a couple of grammatical errors in this in this, in this uh, article. I, I have serious doubts about this validity, so I might have to do more research. We'll see where I'm at. <laughs> this is our third round. This is uh, my third round of turns, and Gretchen's second round of turns on her new dough at this point also. We start to talk you through what the plan is when we pick up part two the next day. Yes. So you'll get kind of where things are headed, a good general outline. Wait, I'm sorry. I think I said this was your second turn. And I think at this point, it's just your first, your first round of turns. My first round of turns. Okay. You did your third round of turns. And you're on your first. So confusing. It gets confusing. Yeah. (laughs) This is why we're trying to do this. Exactly, because we're confused too. (laughs) We have no idea. We just don't. But yeah, very important to getting this right is having your butter not falling out of your dough. So (laughs) yeah, this is a horrible nightmare mess. Horrible nightmare mess. Oh, it's really bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm the one that's just going, I'll just keep going with it. <laughs> and I could perfectly well stop and just not do anything else with it. I'm like, but I might, I might not roll it again. Um, I might just turn it into some biscuits, which I know my parents will be horribly disappointed to hear that I'm going to oh, make biscuits. Of course, that, that is just oh, I such fucked bummer up. news. Oh no, now we get on croute and biscuits. I mean, well, and biscuits. And- yeah, <laughs> Wellington <laughs> and biscuits. My dad's crying. He's so sad. You should oh, see his face. I can, just, I can picture you can imagine the agony. Just crushed. Like, oh, completely. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to bother with this anymore because it's terrible. I like, I have my dough is now on my my rolling pin. So now I got to clean my bowl. Oh, God. Pin. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is, this is no go. Absolutely not. Not happening. All right. Oh, I have to make my book, my butter block. Oh, right. Uh, butter block time. Let's see if I can move. Okay. My butter is coming through a lot. You're so you're starting to see your butter come through a lot too. Yeah. Shaggy. I think shaggy is where we went wrong. Too shaggy. I think too shaggy. Oh, come on. This dough is really uncooperative. Not coming off the thing. Butter coming out everywhere. Ugh. Yeah, same. My God. Well, at least you got. I'm like than almost I did. afraid that yours is going to be the same. Well, I'm afraid I I don't want to keep rolling it right now because I feel like the butter is just getting it's just like going to yeah. melt out or something. Well, um, and that that is exactly what will happen. Though. I mean, I'm on my second turn. Second turn, so I'm almost done with this step. What do I do with that other half a pound of butter that I got to? sacrifice the pastry gods now Ugh, Aww. well now to the biscuit gods. yeah biscuit gods they're gonna be they'll be fine but i think <laughs> i might have a better method for this one butter uh, block round two butter block round two turn that around i have six minutes all right six minutes counting to get this block done before i run out six of space. minutes on the block <laughs> six minutes on the block oh right and I was going to do this. Use some parchment paper. When we Why? do our last two turns, we put it back into a letter fold and it goes in the refrigerator like that. Is that right? Correct. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Possible drawback to the paper. Paper sticking to the butter. Nuggets. Yeah, nuggets. Have I gone too far? Too warm? Yeah, I'm not quite four inches square, but fuck it. Put it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then we find ourselves in our last section where Gretchen's doing her second round of turns. I'm finishing up my last. So if you've been tracking us, that means it's four rounds of turns total with rest periods in between each. 
And I uh, also keep working on those, making my uh, mushrooms nice and pasty. So, pasty. <laughs> pasty. <laughs> like a paste, trying to make it like a paste. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, then we're tired and we just kind of shut down and go to bed. So. <laughs> Oh my God, seriously, we both are so tired after day one. <laughs> so, duck cell, at least enough time for me to start it. Now I need more butter. All right, turn my pan on. And this is so much mushroom. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was slightly more than, I guess it was like closer to two pounds of mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Gretchen, and I cook, like, measurements. I don't need any measurements. No. And and then relentlessly heckle people on nailed it who don't measure things. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, put a little truffle powder. Hot. So this has carob powder in it. Mm. Natural flavors. Salt and black truffle. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see what that does. <laughs> a little bit of that in there. I was uh, doing like looking at Kenji's and his is, you know, it's got like foie gras and <laughs> I was like, I feel like that's too much for, mm -hmm. for beef wellington. One step too much. I still ha I have this on a really high heat. Must have had a lot of moisture in it. I would expect to see a little bit more browning by now. Oh. Sorry, did you use olive oil? I used butter butter okay yeah but it told me to use it wasn't just me well, i know i just didn't remember what you said <laughs> just because you know how i am about butter well i mean butter is just ugh, the best thing in the world yeah it's so good oh i have the cute do you follow my animal page my land of fur and bunny instagram i want i are you talking about the the, the video with the bunny and okay DJ. is that aria yeah she's so big <laughs> she, I, I like did not recognize grown. her at first. i was like what yeah. who is this other rabbit that you've now acquired she looked so big well i for a second i was like is that pod and i was like no it's not pod it almost looked like a small dog and i was like is she dog sitting like what's happening and then i was like oh it's aria yeah I don't know why I didn't think of that right away. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't sober. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, no, it was this morning. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was a really mean, ma mean laugh. <laughs> All right. I might have to turn it down now. It's starting to get like really brown, really crispy. <laughs> I do want that kind of color, but not that fast. How long till we need to, how much time? Five minutes. Good God. Is this the longest time ever? I think I could probably go now because I was doing the turns on the other piece, not the new piece I'm making. So I can probably actually start on that. Oh, you're going to do turns on the new one. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm going to do an experiment. Um, I am pleased with this new dough. Better? Yeah. Oh, the timer's going off for me. Um, okay. Okay, little dough. Let's try this again. Oh, yes. Oh, this is so much better. Yay. That's great. Fucking kitchen lion to me. Yeah. All right. This isn't too bad. I think my butter is just like melting quickly, which I mean, is what it is, I guess. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to turn this over. Oh, this looks great. Oh, man. Much better, huh? Oh, so much better. Great. Yeah, I'm going to do. I'm going to do a book fold. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I am. I might do a book fold on this one too because it ended up just a little bit longer than my other ones. Oh, well, there you go. Solid plan. Solid plan. Level up. <laughs> I need like a little thing that ratchets up so I can leave this in one place and not touch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I should probably have that anyway. Probably be good for my back. <laughs> yeah. Do things up here versus down here. Yeah. Maybe I finally have invented the thing I'm going to invent. This is the thing. This is the thing. Well, hell or high water, I think, is going to be the, the thing. <laughs> but, uh, I, I didn't invent THC-infused water, though. Somebody else has already done that. So. A particular good bend on it. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh no. I'm get I'm getting some breakthrough on my so my brother doesn't seem to be consistently. Yeah, through. that's what's that was what was happening with me on my second turn. At this point, I've kind of just been adding flour to each layer as I go. Okay. Well, I feel like that's fairly valid to do. Yeah. All right. So you are, you're done now, right? Yeah, I have. Uh, or do you have one more set of turns? I have one more, one more. Wait. Yeah, I have one more rollout. One more fold and rollout. And I just did a letter again. Yeah. Rotate. Flower. Go. Okay. So yeah, you've done your six turns now. So. Yeah, I've done the turns. I'm just doing the last roll out to 12 by six yeah it's actually a pretty good consistency at this point well i said that and then i flipped it over and it's all leaky uh fucking leaky dough fucking leaky dough so i i'm flat i flowered the bottom of my or the top of my your dough uh plastic wrap Uh, the bottom of my dough yeah i got both sides that time all right i am on my last fold little letter guy yay all right so tomorrow, so you'll do your beef steps of searing and wait, did you finish? Yeah, you said what you finished as. It's the cinnamon rolls. What? Wait. <laughs> Sorry. Your beef wellington, you said you roll you put out like a parchment and then you put prosciutto, the duck cell, and then the seared steak, and then you roll it up, the cinnamon roll. Yes. Okay. And then put that so in the fridge. So what do you do after that? So okay. that's the first half, basically. And you got to let it chill for about half an hour. Then you're going to, the next okay. would be rolling it up into the pastry. All right. Season the tenderloin, which I'm also going to put mustard on it because that seems to be kind of a thing that most people seem to recommend. Then roll it up in the mushroom, prosciutto mm, mushroom thing. Good. Put it in the fridge and let it chill for about 30 minutes, I think is what it said. Heat my oven to 425, roll out the puff pastry, then I roll my tenderloin in the pastry, and tightly roll. Crimp the edges with a fork to seal well, and roll it back in plastic wrap and chill for 20 minutes, and then bake. Does that tell you what's happening? I can't remember if I've said everything (laughs) now. I think so. (laughs) I was just thinking, tomorrow we'll pick up, you'll start searing your, your, uh, Tenderloin. Tenderloin. Yeah. And then I'll start making my filling, my cream cheese based yes. filling. Yeah. So you'll start with that. And uh, then we'll go from there. Yes. Okay. That will be the first steps tomorrow. Oh my gosh. This is a big weekend. Yeah. I mean, oh. I don't really want to ask this now after we've done all this. But, <laughs> and I also wonder... What is the real difference going to be between homemade and store-bought puff pastry? Right. You may not want to ask me that question right now. (laughs) After we've done all that work, yeah. (laughs) Not a lot is the answer. Okay. Which is why it's pretty widely available. We're just doing this because I'm special and I'd like to torture you. Uh, (laughs) I got to try all, I got to try it. So I got to try it once. Yeah. You got to try it once. Like, yeah. If you're ever able to, you know, be on some sort of baking show, <laughs> you should have at least made pa- puff pastry one time. Right. Okay, yeah. in the fridge you go for a little overnight sleep, little guy. Oh, uh, all right. Well, I'm just going to finish cooking my duck cell. Okay. How much longer or, will that take? Uh, I hope not too much longer. Right. Because <laughs> most of the stuff, the pictures I've seen, it's pretty dark brown. And I'm still Mm -hmm. like sort of in a gray brown area right now. Like it's supposed to be very pasty. So it may end up taking another 15 minutes. It may end up taking another half hour. I'm not entirely sure. So I see. Uh, What's your heat level at at this point? I turned it down to about halfway right now. Because I had it, I've got it in my big pan and I had it on power boil. And that was working really nice to get a lot of the moisture out at first, but I didn't want it to be cooking that quickly, especially because I was doing something else. And right now it's sort of long and slow, get the moisture out, develop the flavors. Although I can smell the carob in the, in this mix, got Mm. like a chocolatey kind of quality to it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's making this mix smell kind of (laughs) chocolatey. That's fun. This morning I I thought I was losing my sense of smell and now I'm like I can smell the chocolatey notes of the carob powder that I put in there so clearly right. I don't have COVID um, no you can smell 
Well, I guess you don't have that version of purpose. Well, so that's the end of part one. Right. So we got our puff pastry in. We are going to do a quick test of it when we start tomorrow to make sure it's in good shape before we wrap all of this protein in it. Right. Um, the expensive stuff. Exactly. If it's not, we will use our frozen puff pastry and keep going. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Contingency plans. Yeah, right. we we were we were thinking about the potential of this. I mean, we we even like I because I started to worry last night that we were gonna have enough puff pastry, and so I actually like weighed all the ingredients to make sure that at least in weight we were gonna end up with what they were recommending. Right. I was like, oh shit, I don't yeah. want to find out tomorrow that we might not have enough. Right. Okay, so that's that's part one. Part one. And we will time travel for a couple, probably 24 hours. Yep. And then. Well, not quite 24. Yeah. Not quite 24. (laughs) So we'll time travel. We'll be back. We'll be back for the rest. I'm excited. Woo. Woo (laughs) Woohoo. Thank you for joining us for the first part of our On Crute series. Puff pastry. And yeah, all the puff pastry and the curing, all the hot curing salmon action you could ever want. And making duck cell. There's a lot happening. Busy episode. Busy episode. So join us on January 5th, where you can pick up with part two and hear one, how the puff pastry comes out. You can figure out how our world level five adventure goes. And then we are wrapping our protein. We're making, we're finishing up all of the components that go inside the Uncrute and the Wellington. And we are roasting our asparagus. And then, of course, learning things and talking about tons of other random things, as always. Thanks for joining us for another High Gluttony. We hope to see you on the 5th. Yeah. High Gluttony. We just have to say, hi, gluttony, at every closing now. <laughs> I don't know. It's it either feels that appropriate. or the end or there, sometimes yeah. we just cheer. <laughs> just cheers. Yeah. Maybe we could have like a go get HG or I don't know. Go, go, go HG. <laughs> go, go HG. <laughs> <laughs> Google go HG power. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could-